Hey, Jeff and Nicole, it's uh, Grant Grant here. It's about 11 o'clock on Sunday. Um, just circling around, getting to creating the maintenance proposal. Figured I would go through it with you real quick so you understood everything, okay? Um, so you currently have a lawn mowing company. Uh, when they cut the grass, I believe they disperse the clippings. It means they cut it and the grass comes out of the mower get to, and gets dispersed in a lawn. Right. What we do, which is different, is we vacuum the clippings. So we have a bagger on the back of our vacuum and it collects the clippings as we're cutting the lawn. All right. uh, it takes about 20% more time to do this, but um, it offers a better product for the, the reasons that are listed here. You'll notice there's a couple pros and cons in regards to, uh, to doing it that way. So it's more expensive. So I figured, you know what, uh, if you guys are happy with your current lawn mowing service, then you might as well keep them to do the lawn mowing. All right? They can do the spring cleanup and the fall cleanup. Those are tied to the lawn mowing, the lawn cutting service. Okay, So that would be still underneath their envelope of services. Okay. Uh, in regards to shrub trimming, uh, you know, most lawn cutting services don't know the names of the plants nor have any idea what time of the year to trim them, how to trim them, how to deadhead the roses, or, or, and, and basically all the plants we just put in required special maintenance in regards to timing and, and technique as far as how they're supposed to be trimmed. All right, so um, what I did was I broke it down for you. So in 2019, my prediction is somewhere between 70 to 80 hours. You'll notice that this price is not included in the subtotal. But I did give you a price for the remainder of 2018, which is right here. All right, so I figured it takes somewhere between 45 and 55 hours. Okay. Um, this next line item is just every time we show up, we have to mobilize our crew and then you know pick up the uh, debris that are resulting from doing that gardening service. All right. Um, we do have two different crews that come to the property to do the gardening. So we have one crew that comes and trims the excuse me, trims the plants only, and another crew that does the, that pulls the weeds. So the weeding has to be done on a very timely basis, so once a month. Some clients say, you know what, I don't wanna look at any weeds during the course of a month, so they have us come every two weeks. So if you wanna have us give you a quote for coming every two weeks, we can. There'd be an, obviously additional hours associated with that. But 95% of our clients have us come in once a month for pulling the weeds and they find that to be sufficient. All right, so again, it's two different crews, two different visits per month for, for doing both services, okay? So this is just, again, for the remainder of 2018, you have about eight visits, four for, four for pulling weeds, four for um, trimming the plants, okay? Um, and then what we found over time was that most clients want to definitely keep an open line of communication in regards to, okay, uh, this is our technique for trimming the plant. Some people want it more loose fit. Some people want it more sheared. Some people want the boxwood square. Some people want them um, circular. So um, what, we, what we do to offer good service is we'll send our property manager down there and meet with you periodically throughout um, throughout the year. This way you can voice your opinion and we can also communicate with you to make sure that you're happy with what we're doing as far as uh, trimming the plants. Um, it also gives an opportunity if there's something else um, that needs attention then you know ob obviously you can voice that with the property manager. Um, so again it's all about communication. So this is the fee associated with doing that. So to, for your property I figured you could always do spring, summer, fall Spring is obviously past us, so at this point there'll be only two more visits, summer and fall, and that's the cost associated with that. Um, you have a lot of uh, cracks in the driveway that are gonna breed weeds, plus you have like uh, perimeter areas like that, that might perhaps might need some weed killer, so that's what the weed killer cost is associated with that. Um, okay. Going to the next item here, mulching. Um, we obviously mulched all the beds uh, that we installed plants, but we did not mulch the beds in the center circle of the driveway and the Japanese maple bed to the left side of your pool. 
um, those need mulch. It, you don't save any money by not mulching because the weeds just become um, so plentiful and it requires so much time to pull weeds. Uh, the whole idea of mulch is uh, it's beneficial to the root system of the plants so the plants are healthier um, and it also forms a blanket to help prevent weeds. So for this year my recommendation is we do, we do do the mulch in the center circle of the driveway and the Japanese maple bed. Um, so that's the nine yards. Next year for those same beds, rather than putting down two, two and a half inches, you're only going to have to do about an inch, half inch to an inch, just for color. So the concept is mulch decomposes at a certain rate, and what you're trying to do is just replenish the mulch that decomposed from the previous year while also adding color, which is aesthetics, and also preventing weeds. So it's, it's really no other solution for that. Um, so again, this year, nine yards. Next year, you'll probably need about 18 yards to do the whole property. Um, and there's obviously some preparation involved for doing the mulch. And so that's, that's everything in this uh, subtotal here. Okay. Uh, deer rabbit spray repellent. I had my guys go over there and just spray all the plants again for you, even after we finished the job. I think they were there last week because I was just nervous about you losing all your flowers and all your plants. So the deer, uh, especially in the wooded areas where you're located, are going to be very plentiful. And what you need to do is you need to keep the deer off your property. So it requires consistent spraying, typically nine sprays during the year. Um, you've already passed through uh, April, May, June. So now you're into July. So for this year, there'll only be six sprays. So that'd be the cost associated with that. Okay. Time the boxwoods before the winter. So... Uh, this is a constant problem with a lot of properties that we just pick up for maintenance customers. They wonder why they've got big holes in their boxwoods. And that's because the snow falls off the roof or you get a heavy snowstorm and it crushes the boxwoods and opens them up and they look disformed. So this is tying them in a specific way with a type of jute twine um, to prevent the, dox the boxwoods from getting damaged. Now what I would say is when you do get a heavy snowstorm you still have to go outside and knock the snow off the boxwoods. It just, this really helps prevent damage to the boxwoods. The other thing is that Japanese maple behind your house, um, on a heavy snowstorm, it could literally rip that tree in half. So you really, really gotta be careful to keep the heavy snow off that, off that Japanese maple. It's a really, really valuable, expensive tree and uh, it's something that needs to be paid attention to. Typically what I would do is whoever you're hiring to do your uh, snow plowing, you put that as part of their contract that they have to broom off the snow off your boxwoods and broom the snow off your Japanese maple. Okay. Once that Japanese maple splits down the middle, it's dead. And that's probably a $5,000 tree that you have back there. Uh, okay, let's see here. Tree pruning 12 to 30 feet. That's outside of the gardening. You'll notice it says to, do, to be determined. Um, and that's gonna be more of an as-needed basis. Okay. Gutter cleaning, that's gonna be done by someone else, hopefully by the lawn cutting company. Uh, we try not to do that because of the liability involved and it's dangerous. Okay. Uh, plant tree healthcare. So all your plants uh, are susceptible to disease and insect damage. So the there's two horticultural oil sprays here. That is the most environmentally friendly way to, um, to kill any insect populations on your shrubs. It, um, so that's like kind of the industry standard way of, of reducing insect populations so your, your shrubs don't get damaged from insects, okay? Um, as far as disease prevention, uh, you know, roses can get a black spot, which is a type of fungus disease. You don't have any laurels. You do have dogwood trees. Dogwood trees get something called anthracnose. And anthracnose, anthracnose um, is, is a foiler disease. It's not something that will kill the tree. So the only way to prevent that is you'd actually have to spray fungicides three times in the spring. It just makes the leaves turn a little black. So it's, it's an optional item. Um, if you were gonna do the three fungicide sprays in the spring for three different visits, it's $300 total. 
I don't necessarily totally recommend it, but some people want their trees looking perfect, and then they'll and then they'll end up paying for that. Okay. At the same time, you can spray the roses, but the difficult part about the roses is if you really want them to be black spot free, which is the fungus, you really have to spray them huh, every two weeks, almost the whole season. So most people it doesn't bother, and most people don't do that. Okay. You don't have any plum trees, and uh, I think you might have one crab apple tree that gets apple rust fungus which is like yellow blotches over the leaves. So again, if you, that's also treated at the same time as your dogwood trees. So if it's something you want to do, you can, but it's not absolutely necessary. So unless I put it's not included. Um, let's see, we talked about the fungicide sprays and then obviously it's the fertilizing of the shrubs. Um, you know, that's very important. So that's the fall feeding. We use a deep root needle off a huge spray truck and we inject um, fertilizer around all the shrubs and shrubs and uh, around all the shrubs and the trees on your property. Okay. Uh, tick spray. The biggest thing that differenti differentiates us versus most other companies offering that service is the equipment that we're using. So our equipment typically is going to be twice the turbulence, twice the power versus other um, versus other competitors equipment okay so um, in that situation you're getting a much more of a thorough a thorough job thorough spray um, with ticks they typically habitat the shady areas and underneath your leaves so if you're just broadcast spraying and you're with a with a low volume, a low pressure system you're not really uh, getting underneath those leaves so our advantage is, again is just the equipment that we're using which is highlighted here in blue okay so right now you only really have two applications left you could do a third one right now if you're worried about it we could do one now and then one you know uh, you know one during the summer say a month from now if you're concerned about it but there's, right now there's two applications I have summer and fall included Irrigation, that's going to directly correlate with obviously how your plants and your lawn look. So there's an opening in the system, winterizing of the system, and adjusting the system. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see here. Lawn fertilizing. This, the only time you're going to get your lawn back up to shape is going to be this fall. All right, so I wouldn't really recommend doing much before that, uh, but this is a, like a proven system that's gonna work. Now there's gonna be a lawn renovation that's separate from this quote. I'll have to send you a separate email on that. But um, there's gonna be initial lawn renovation and then after that, this is the maintenance associated, excuse me, associated with it. <laughs> okay, so you can read through there and you'll see everything involved. Okay. Um, so in reality, just I'm gonna make one adjustment on this before I sent this to you. I think you should we should do actually a fertilizer and the grub control now, because you don't want to have the grubs take over your lawn, and then have to deal with it all next year. So we should do a preventative grub control and a fertilizer just to try to start to get getting your nitrogen levels up in your lawn. So come fall, um, you have a little bit more optimal soil condition. So again, I actually would start it now. Um, I wouldn't worry about the weeds yet, but it's just more about preventing the grubs and also um, changing the chemistry of your soil to get it ready uh, for the fall. All right, now this is a summary of everything just for 2018. Okay, so it was 8937 plus tax, and the way that we do it is we split it up among equal payments. Obviously, you're starting mid-season, so there's only six payments left. So you'd be dealing with um, equal payments uh, through December 1st. And that's it. So I'll shoot this over to you and we'll take it from there. Thanks.